Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. This episode is sponsored by a holy friend of mine, Baruch Gali, that asks that, that, that the merit of this video should bless each and every one of you to have an intimate relationship with your Creator through the merit of your simple efforts. So, the topic of this video is what will happen when this, the Mashiach arrives? The day we're all waiting for, the excited, mo the moment we're all, we're all anticipating. Every day we pray for this, three times a day. And it is something that is very, very exciting and mysterious as well. So what's going to happen when the Mashiach arrives? Well, we have to understand that the way, the exact way it's going to unfold, the feeling that we're going to feel when this happens, is something that's, that's a surprise. Something that's going to surprise us. Just like a child, when, you, when a parent wants to surprise their child with a birthday party, part of what makes them so, part of what makes this process so exciting is the fact that the child is surprised by the surprise party. You know, when you give somebody a gift, a birthday present, you see the, the present is wrapped in a package, you know you're getting a gift, but the exact details of it are a surprise, are mysterious. That is what actually makes it so exciting. However, while, while it will be a surprise the way the Mashiach's arrival unfolds, there are some things that actually need to happen, that there are specific things we do know will happen. And how do we know this? Because they're prophesied in the Tanakh. They're Nevuah. It's a Nevuah, which means a prophecy. So what exactly will happen? Well, for example, there are different details, but the Mashiach will arrive. The Mashiach has to be a descendant of King David from the house of Mel uh, David and Melech, a descendant direct on his father's side. He has to bring the world to tshuva. He has to bring the Jewish people back to their master, back to Hashem. And we'll get to what these details are, but there are certain requirements that need to happen in order to prove that this person is the Mashiach and to prove that we're in the days of Mashiach. And these are things that we do know from the Tanakh. Another thing we know is that there will be a tremendous pleasure experienced by all of the living beings when the Mashiach arrives. Each and every person alive in the days of Mashiach will experience a tremendous joy, a tremendous pleasure. And we know that actually when Mashiach arrives, that there's going to be laughter. Everyone's going to start to laugh. A laugh that's never been experienced before. There's also going to be, while there's going to be a few details, is two general um, blessings that we're going to experience. One is going to be a tremendous pleasure, tremendous joy, tremendous good. And on the other hand, there's going to be an end to all pain and suffering. All And this is part of the process of what we just said earlier, that there are certain prophecies that we know will happen. So what are these prophecies, some of these prophecies that will and the suffering is that there will be no more death. There will be no more illness, illnesses. There will be no more murder. People will not murder one another. There will be no more war. As we say in the, the song, the Chabad song, there will be no more war. There will be no more war. And this is something that will also prove that Mashiach is here. Is that there will be no more wars. And in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, we learn that all of the nations will turn their swords into plowsheds. All of their money that we see in the world today, that nations spend trillions of dollars on, on military equipment, they're going to turn that military equipment into farming equipment because let me tell you something, my friends, there will be no more need for all of these weapons because there will be no more war. There will also be no more... No more pain, no more poverty, no more hunger. All of these things. So there's like two angles we're coming out, out, out of it from. Hashem is going to remove all the negativity, all the darkness, and He's going to bring in added light. So these are like simultaneous blessings we're going to experience from our Master, from Hashem. A person in this world, a person has, there's like good blessings that we can experience and pain that we could, God forbid, a person can experience. So God is going to remove the darkness and he's going to bring in the light, which is something that's exciting to say the least from all angles. Another thing is that we will, we will all experience something 
tremendous. And this is another aspect to what we just spoke about. First of all, we have to realize that this, this prophecy, this is the whole purpose of why God created the world. The whole, it says, Neutz um, Tchilasoi Besoifer. The, the whole purpose of the beginning is for the end. Right. Mashiach coming is the end of this era, the end of the world as we know it in the beginning of the new era. But from the get-go, from the moment God created the world, His whole purpose is to bring the Mashiach. Because that is when, as we'll get to soon, that is when God will reveal Himself to the world, which was His ultimate desire from the beginning, is to experience, is to reveal Himself to His creators, to His creations. Because God wanted to share Himself with with us. So he created us and allows us and is setting up the process for us to be ready to experience his revelation. So this is all we have to realize is Hashem desires this to happen in this modern world. For the Torah, which was given many years ago, before there was technology, before there was such modern developments, God desired it to be in this modern world, this world where there's a lot of darkness, there's a lot of materialism, there's a lot of distractions. This is the world that God is choosing to bring the Mashiach into. Because we know we're in the last generation, my friends. There's another deeper aspect to this as well. This is that the Mashiach is going to be our teacher, our master. That is a very interesting part because... Well, all these tremendous blessings will happen. There'll be end to wars, there'll be end to suffering, there'll be a lot of pleasure, be a lot of abundance and wealth. Not wealth in the sense where businesses and all these things, it's going to be much greater than that. There's going to be no hunger, no poverty at all. Because even if you say the economy is flourishing in this, the way we know it, it still doesn't mean much because there's always been poor people in this world. As Even in the most in the most prosperous of times. But when Mashiach arrives, that will all change. So there'll be these type of blessings. But there'll be something even greater that the Mashiach will teach us the deepest secrets of Torah. The Mashiach is the head of the Jewish people. He's the one who cares the most out of any other person for his, for his people. Therefore, he will know exactly what piece of Torah, what portion of Torah to teach each person that will trigger them to become a tzaddik of themselves. Because we know that each person has the Mashiach within them. Each person has Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses within them. Each person has God within them. The Mashiach will be the one who will be able to reveal that to each and every person according to their level. We know actually that when Mashiach arrives, the, even like the children will be greater prophets than Moses. Because Moses was the greatest prophet to ever live, and he, even he was not able to see, so to speak, Hashem's face. Hashem had to show him his hindsight. What does this mean? This doesn't mean literally as we think of a face and a hindsight. In fact, it means something much deeper. But by way of analogy, because the Torah was given to man, Hashem uses physical analogies to explain these tremendous divine ideas. But in, in short, Moses wasn't able to see the innermost revelation of God. He was able to see a ray of this, the outer part of this revelation, a little glimpse of this revelation. When Mashiach arrives, we will all experience this. And this is what we have to realize, that Mashiach will teach us the deepest secrets of Torah, the sweetest aspects of Torah, a new dimension of Torah that's been hidden and is waiting to be revealed. And this will also be facilitated with the third temple, of course. We have to mention this. The third temple will be built. The base of Migdash is Shlishi. And the third temple isn't just a building, but rather it is the divine connection into the world. The divine channel into the world. That the, when the base of Migdash will be standing, the whole world will, will, will experience coming outwards of the temple a divine revelation. Like a, an outer, just like, so to speak, an analogy, like an ocean that waves go and they channel outward and the further the wave goes the smaller it becomes so too the closer you are to the, the temple the greater the divine revelation and from there it spreads forth and and trickles into the world 
So this, the, the, the Mashiach will prepare us all and, and, and make us ready to experience the revelation of God. That God will reveal himself to the world as prophesied in the Tanakh that says that your master will no longer hide himself from you. God will no longer hide himself from us. As we know, when we learn in Hasidus and Kabbalah that in order for God to create the world, he had to hide himself. There was, the world would not be able to handle God's revelation at, in the beginning. Because God is so powerful, his light is so intense the, the world was not a proper vessel to grasp that. It would be completely blown out of existence, to say the least. But, since Hashem gave us the Torah and gave us mitzvahs, it makes the world already, it changes the world into a proper reciprocal, a receptacle, in, able, in order to receive the divine light and not to be blown out of existence, but to enjoy it. So that is what we have to realize. This is what's waiting for us. And now we have to realize that this is coming at any moment now. This could happen at any moment. We are in the last generation. And the Rebbe explained something very interesting, that the way to prepare the world for Mashiach and to speed up the process of Mashiach's arrival is by learning about Mashiach. So right now we're learning about all these tremendous, exciting ideas. And this brings us closer. This thinking about the coming Mashiach, this living it and realizing that it's not just an inspiring thing that we speak about that's nice and cute and exciting, but rather it is a reality that is promised to us that is in the process of being revealed. And this is something intense, something that should, when thought about, should, should give birth to a love and fear of Hashem. It should cause us love for Hashem and excitement, but it should also cause us some fear as well to realize that this is serious, it's not a joke. And of course, when we have fear of Hashem, it should also lead to a confidence of bitachon and amuna that we have the power to succeed and to do tshuva and to do the right thing and we will succeed. And then, of course, a later development of this will be followed by the resurrection of the dead, where all the people who have passed away will be returned into this world. And then we will enter afterwards an even greater revelation of God. And then it will lead into the Yom Shekul Shabbos, the year 6000, where will be an even greater development of the days of Mashiach. So we know that there's three general processes of the days of Mashiach. And, and even before that, Mashiach will arrive, and the world may not know that this person is Mashiach yet. So there will be like an introduction stage to the days of Mashiach, and then the Mashiach will be revealed, and the base of English will be built, and then all the Jewish people will return to the land of Israel, and there will be tremendous revelations of God. And, and, and then there will be the resurrection of the dead, which, of course, to say the least, will be a tremendous revelation. And then it will lead into the final stage, which will be the Yom Shekul Shabbos, the, the year 6000, the everlasting Sabbath, where there's not, you know, we know that this will take place, but the way it will take place, the, what it will look like, is not by any means in our in our ability to explain through words just yet. But we will see. We know certain details, but of course, the way Hashem makes things happen a lot of times, we know what will happen. We know general ideas of how it will happen. But what it will look like, what it will feel like, is not really in our ability to grasp just yet. But the more we learn about the days of Mashiach, the more we tap into it, and we actually taste of the days of Mashiach, because we know that it's a mitzvah to eat the food of Shabbos before Shabbos, to taste the food of Shabbos. And, and the Rebbe explains that when you learn Chassidus, you are tasting of the Torah of Mashiach, because Chassidus is the Torah of Mashiach, Kabbalah and Chassidus, which are the inner portions of Torah, which teach you about God. And of course, the outer part of Torah, which is the laws and the, and the, and the Chumash, the stories, and all the details, these are equally one with the Torah, and you need both. It's not enough just to learn the Pneumius of the Torah, the secrets of the Torah, and the Chassidus and the Kabbalah. You need to actually take it into physical action and do the mitzvahs. But it's also not enough to just do the mitzvahs and to do the physical actions. You have to know why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. So may Hashem bless you all. May we experience this today. Thank you again. A bracha for our sponsor, Baruch Gali. And if you want to sponsor the Torah channel, partner with the Torah channel to spread the message of Hashem, to spread the coming of Mashiach to the world, then please email me and you can also donate to the link below. And I'm looking forward to taking this, this project to the next level. May Hashem bless you all. Thank you all so, so much.